So that's my mug there. I'm currently walking around in Rochester on a rainy day. Just walked into Rochester Cathedral. I'm, well, I'm just walking away now. And uh, just out of the front door there is the remains of the, well, there's like a, a marking on the floor to show the old foundations of the previous Anglo-Saxon cathedral. And as we know, the Anglo-Saxon uh, Anglo-Saxon cathedral was more than likely built on top of some kind of, you know, Celtic or Neolithic shrine type thingamabob. There it is, there's a little diagram where the old uh, cathedral used to be. As we walk in the west side, walking up towards the east end, I made a, a short little video there. Um, channel is because of the depiction of the River Medway and obviously my channel concerning you know the ghost of Bluebell Hill you know the goddess of Bluebell Hill um, it relates the specialness of the area kind of conforms to that kind of idea uh, where are we oh look there I am that's the fresco apparently this was made about 15 years ago from the time that I'm laying down this video on YouTube uh, 2020 um, apparently it was the first fresco of this size to be painted in a cathedral for 800 years by a Russian artist I just had a really lovely chat with uh, a lady about the symbolism in this particular piece I'm gonna sit down here outside a cafe it's closed oh no one of mind so now this is what caught my eye. This kind of, you know, this commemorates the building of the new cathedral in place of the Anglo-Saxon one. So we've got the River, Med uh, the River Medway there. Oh, don't worry, mate, I'm just making a, yeah, I'm making a video actually. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I'll be gone in a second. Cheers, my friend. Ah, right. If you look up, now this, this is, there's no way that the artist didn't know what he was doing. Anyone scored in, you know, religious, artistic, theological symbolism. There's no way. I mean, well, I'd be really surprised if he didn't realise what he's done. Okay. I've asked before, these two figures uh, by Christ's feet. You've got like a, a double fish on one side and a guy with a, like a, a wine amphora on the other. Right. I've been told before that these are particular saints. I was told today by the lovely lady that I just had a chat to that this kind of symbolizes, you know, Christ is being baptized by John the Baptist and he's looking towards a virtuous life. In other words, the man on the, the fishes away from the drunken, drunken life. Now, obviously, you know, with multiple layers of symbolism, it could be that, but come on, what is it really? There is a massive, um, astrological wheel on the far like western altar the main altar at the end of the cathedral obviously someone was interested in, in uh, magic and the occult uh, even if it's widely condemned by the church on the surface you know obviously especially you know around the time of the, the renaissance and the resurfacing of magical texts there's a lot going on you know trithemius that that kind of thing so if we sorry mate i have to bring the chairs in oh don't worry mate <laughs> sorry to disturb you sorry. sorry to disturb you if we look up at christ at the top what we really have is sorry, i'm gonna get the chair in very complex astrono astronomical symbolism. Cheers, mate. Hello. See you later. Known as the procession of the equinoxes. Anyone familiar with, you know, your kind of alternative archaeology, you know, Robert Bavell, Graham Han Hancock, John Anthony West, that kind of thing, you're probably going to know a little bit about the procession of the equinoxes and, you know, the, the rising and setting of new world ages. So, uh, 
basically you know because of the tilt and the angle of the earth there's a there's a large cycle whereby a new sign will be rising behind the sun on the spring equinox and it will stay there for roughly 2160 years the whole cycle taking oh was it 26,000 um, you know I'm on video right now something like that anyway where are we now we're in the age of Pisces the fish is the symbol of Christ you know there's a lot about fishermen that kind of thing right see it on backs of people's cars it's a recognized symbol of Christianity so Christ is looking at Pisces because right now we're in the waning stages of the age of Pisces what he can't see what he's turned from because it's not his appointed time is Aquarius the man with the jug the man with the water jug right so I mean this is not too you know it's not like it's not a dethroning because obviously there's talk in the Bible of a second coming and this kind of thing so obviously you know I mean this ties in with the astrology uh, on a deeper level there's talk of you know the Israelites worshipping the, the bull obviously in the Old Testament this symbolizes the the waning of the age of Taurus there's a depiction of um, Moses with horns you know symbolism to do with the age of Aries so for anyone that's interested in um, the procession of the equinoxes and uh, symbolism and that kind of thing I think what we got here is you know an encoded message of the awareness of the procession of the equinoxes in a cathedral where there's already evidence in the form of the uh, the astrological will under the carpet at the back of you know uh, a Masonic connection and an awareness of these um, uh, realities I guess God that was so difficult you know I sit down and someone's shutting up shop I said the reason I had to get this online straight away is because I just for the first time I actually just sat and discussed that with someone so I thought you know I'll, I'll pop this online now because uh, you know I wouldn't want you know I think you know if you see something you've got a right to be first before it bleeds out into you know um, gossip within the cathedral after that short little discussion with me about uh, renaissance magic and angels and, and that kind of thing so right that's it I'm going home just another little magical thing in the vicinity of the river Medway you know uh, a place that is replete with um, hidden gems good boo <laughs>